Hey everyone, uh, this video is about the Sharp PC1211, uh, the first basic programmable pocket computer that was released by Sharp in 1980. And the 1211 had a sister device, the PC1210, which is more or less uh, the same model with uh, less memory that was released in Japan at the same time. And so physically, they looked like the Sharp EL5100, a programmable pocket calculator that Sharp had introduced a year earlier uh, that was the first to support the AER or Algorithmic Expression Reserve Programming Language, uh, which I've covered in other videos. But in 1980, uh, BASIC was firmly being established on other consumer devices, such as the Apple II, uh, the TRS-80 and the Commodore PET. And the PC1211's inclusion of a built-in BASIC interpreter was really a deliberate attempt to bring that home computer experience into a pocket-sized device. And the PC1211 was released in Japan and other areas um, outside of the United States. But Tandy brought this breakthrough device uh, to the US, rebranding it as the TRS-80 Pocket Computer One or PC One. <clears throat> and it was sold through its Radio Shack stores. Uh, of course, this is um, the first in a series of uh, Tandy Radio Shack Pocket Computers. Uh, starting from the PC-1 up to the PC-8, which was released in 1986. Uh, and they're all based on Sharp or Casio devices. Uh, but the 1211 or the PC-1 really set the mould for the series and uh, really all pocket computers in general. So the body of the 1211 uh, is ABS plastic and the device is really light at about 100, uh, 400 grams, including batteries. It has a single line LCD display that can show up to 24 uh, 5x7 pixel characters. Uh, and there's no backlight, of course. The device was optimized around low battery usage. And uh, unfortunately, displays were very susceptible to LCD bleed. Um, so I believe this device has its original screen uh, that just has like a small amount of bleeding on its top edge. Uh, and this is actually very unusual to find examples in uh, such a relatively good condition now. Often you'll see uh, screens that have been uh, totally blacked out. Um, but the good news is you can replace the display relatively easily. And I'll add a link in the show notes uh, to a video on uh, the Hey Bert channel where uh, Bert shows uh, how to uh, do this replacement. Uh, the keyboard is <clears throat> very straightforward. Uh, it's a bit like a TRS-80 keyboard shrunk down uh, with the QWERTY uh, section and number pad. Uh, and there's a shift key uh, for selecting a set of extended characters on uh, the top two rows of uh, the keyboard, uh, but also for the use of reservable keys, uh, which can take up the lower uh, two rows. And uh, these also kind of allowed for more efficient entry of basic keywords and other strings, and uh, I'll demo those later. A uh, key feature of the 1211 was its expandability. Uh, so we can kind of see on the left side of the device is a proprietary 11 pin edge connector. And this was for connecting it to a cassette recorder for program and data storage, as well as a Sharp PC120 or 121 printer. Uh, and I believe they could also, uh, you could power the device uh, while it was docked. Uh, looking at the back side of the 1211 now, and uh, we can see the serial number uh, and a reset switch. Uh, there's also this groove that uh, allow, holds the device in place when it's stopped with a peripheral. Uh, and there are four screws that can be removed uh, to access the batteries. Uh, so we'll take those out now. Uh, so here's the device with the rear cover removed, and we can see the three coin cell batteries. Uh, and uh, one of the two PCBs. So this one has a chip at its centre, which is a, a Sharp SC4158 uh, 4-bit microcontroller. So let's have, uh, check out how the 1211 works now. And uh, so like a lot of uh, Sharp and Casio devices, 
the 1211 has a number of modes uh, and we can cycle through these using the mode key. Uh, so we've got the usual run and program modes, uh, but there's also two others. So there's uh, reserve mode uh, for reserve programs and I'll talk about that later and also def mode. Uh, and so let's switch to run mode and here we can of course enter arithmetic expressions and uh, evaluate them. Uh, we can also call scientific functions so uh, and using uh, parentheses or uh, without parentheses. Uh, and if we want to um, edit a preview expression, uh, we can hit the playback key uh, and go and change. And hit enter again to reevaluate. <clears throat> the 1211 uh, supports single letter numeric and character variables, so uh, we can assign a variable to say x. Uh, and then use that in an expression. It also uh, supports uh, variable indexing or arrays and index, uh, indexes start at one. Uh, so say if we assign <clears throat> a number to uh, A2, uh, like A2 equals 15, uh, well, that actually writes a uh, uh, value to the variable b. And reserve mode uh, lets us assign strings to the shifted version of the uh, alphabetic characters on the bottom two rows. Uh, so uh, we're in reserve mode now, and to assign a, um, a value to say shift s, uh, we hit enter, uh, enter shift s and let's assign, say sign. Uh, and now if we uh, switch back to run mode, uh, we can just touch um, shift S and uh, we get sign instead. <clears throat> uh, and the 1211 came with two standard keyboard overlays, uh, one with some uh, key, keys pre-assigned um, and another for creating custom mappings. Of course, the 1211 supports a simple dialectic basic, and uh, the device actually came with a uh, almost a 300-page applications manual that included example programs uh, with, with many mathematical, statistical, and engineering uh, applications, and even a set of games. Uh, so I've typed in this uh, simple one in program mode that generates random numbers using a congruence method. Uh, and here we can see some of the features of 1211 BASIC. Uh, on the first line, we can see uh, a, uh, we can assign a shortcut key uh, to a line in the program. So in this case, a letter A, and I'll show how this is um, used when we run it. Uh, of course, we can prompt for string and number inputs. Uh, there's also a simple for loop. Uh, and beep <clears throat> and print command uh, to print the outputs. Now the 1211 also um, supported go subs. So there are two ways to run this program. Uh, we can either um, switch to run mode and type run, uh, or alternatively, if we are in def mode, uh, we can just hit uh, shift A uh, and the program will start. So. Let's use zero as our initial uh, value and we'll generate three random numbers. So that was the first one, the second, and the third. And so the PC1211 was a simple but powerful device and it's really interesting to compare it to uh, the later Sharp PCG850V uh, uh, which was the last pocket computer ever released to the market uh, 21 years later in 2001. And the 850V is more really an evolution of the design of the 1211 rather than a revolution. <clears throat> uh, yes, it supports a larger four-row display, 
Uh, it also has an assembler and C programming language and a more powerful dialect at BASIC. Uh, but otherwise, the function and extensibility is more or less the same as the 1211. And so kudos to Sharp uh, for uh, pioneering this uh, device type with such a well-designed uh, and thought through device. And that seeded um, so many different models over those two decades. Uh, and that so many uh, professional engineers and developed uh, developers first learned programming on. <clears throat> so I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get alerted of new videos.